Let's solve Mario less comfortable in CS50's problem set one. All right, this problem looks really fun. Uh, it also could be pure torture. Okay, so Mario must ascend right aligned pyramid of bricks as in the below. In a file called Mario C and a folder called Mario less, implement a program in C that recreates that pyramid using hashes for bricks as in the below. Okay, so somewhere in our terminal, we are going to output this pyramid. We need to build this somehow but prompt the user for an int for the pyramid's actual height so that the program can also output shorter pyramids like the below. Okay, so here we had a pyramid of a certain height, but we wanna make this pyramid like dynamic. We wanna be able to enter in a certain height, whatever it is. Okay, reprompt the user again and again as needed. If your input is not greater than zero or not an int altogether. Now here, let's look at our demo just to really understand what we're going to be doing. Okay, so here we're just running make Mario. This is our build command. It's building our program. This make command basically creates an executable file and then we're going to run that file to get our program to run. So here we ran make Mario and then here we're saying dot slash Mario because we are running our executable file that we created. So we built our program and now we just need to run it. So we enter in eight and this could be any number really. Our program just spits out this pyramid right here and we can notice that it has eight rows. So we can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's eight rows and each column at the bottom has eight different pieces here. So we can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, let's unpause. So here they're showing us what would happen if we enter in a length of negative three. You can't really have a pyramid with a height of negative three. What does that mean? That's like saying build a mountain with a height of negative three. So here we should just get prompted again. So if we enter in negative three, we want our program to be like, hey dummy, that's not right. Enter in an actual valid number. So our program will keep reprompting us. So we can see here that the program reprompted us until we put in a positive three. And then we built a pyramid that has a height of three. So we can see it has three rows, one, two, three. And then also it has the length of three as well. So it has three hashes, one, two, three. Starts off with only one hash um, and then ends up with three hashes. Now we've understood the problem better. Uh, we can start writing our code. Now we have VS Code set up in our browser. If you have no idea what's going on here, like where are we? Or if you're wondering, how do I get this library and these things um, in here? Then in my previous video, my previous hello video for CS50, I do explain all of this setup. So just pause the video and go watch that. If you already have your setup, then we're good to go and let's start coding. So we wanna start our program by writing our main function uh, similar to what we did last time. So we can say int main void, and then we wanna have our curly brackets for everything that will go inside this function. Okay, so let's just do one of the easiest tasks. Let's just prompt the user. So first we'll create an integer. Uh, we'll say int height, and we're going to just leave it for now. Uh, and then next we're going to say height is equal to get int, and then inside of here we'll say height and a space. And we could write anything in here. We could say enter a height please, anything we want. But for now, we're just going to say height. And you might be wondering like, where did I get this get in? Like, what even is this? Um, if we look over at the CS50 docs, we got it from within here. So CS50 offers you a library with these pre-built or already built functions. And we're going to use these in our code. So if you're wondering why I wrote what I wrote, you can check out some of these examples and see them here. Okay, now let's just pause and see what happens here. So we are going to CD in to our Mario less, and then we are going to say make Mario, and then we are going to say dot slash Mario, we are going to run that executable file that we just built. Now here we see that we are getting what we want. We are getting prompted for a height. So let's just enter in five. Okay, nothing is happening yet, but we're getting closer to solving some of the problem. So what we want to do here is we want to keep prompting the user if they're putting in invalid heights. We want to reprompt the user again and again as needed if their input is not greater than zero. So we're going to use a do while loop. So we'll say do, and then we will add in our heights and our function right here, and then we'll add our while. So here we're just saying while this condition, whatever it is, while this is true, then we need to do this, whatever code is executed in here. So we'll say while height is less than one. All we're really saying here is, okay, as long as height is less than one, let's keep 
prompting the user for a height because we don't wanna have negative five or zero or anything like that. Okay, so let's save this and let's actually test this out. Okay, so now let's run our check 50. So this is a command where we can check our code and see if it's passing CS50's test. So we can say check 50, CS50 problems 2024, spring Mario less. Okay, and if you're wondering like, where did I get this from? This is over here when we look at correctness. So this is how we're going to check if our program is working, but let's just see if it passes any tests so far. Okay, waiting, waiting, waiting. Okay. Okay, we have some failing tests because we haven't completed the problem yet, but look at how much we have done already. Look at all of these passing tests, whoa. Okay, so Mario C exists, it compiles, it rejects a height of negative one, rejects a height of zero. Okay, so this is working much better and we can go and test this right here. We are also rejecting non-numeric heights as well. Okay, so to build our pyramid, uh, we need to basically create a bunch of hashes um, in our terminal, right? So we see all of these hashes, we need to basically add these. And we could say, we could just start saying, you know, print F and we could say, this, do like five of these. And uh, we could run this again. We could say hash, 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 like that. So now let's run this program. First we need to, oops, we're getting an error. Okay, what do we do? Oh, we forgot just that there. All right, let's try that again. Great, no errors. And we need to enter a height, um, let's just say three, and let's see what happens. Okay, so there are all of our hashes. These are actually both on the same line. Okay, so instead of doing something like this, instead of repeating ourselves a bunch uh, and writing out print, 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 we are going to take advantage of the fact that we're using a computer. And instead of running the same line of code a bunch of times, we are going to use a loop. We can also go over a quick refresher of for loops. So there are three parts of for loops. You have initialization. So you set a starting point for the loop counter. You have the increments and you update the loop counter at the end of each iteration. And then you have the condition. So your loop will continue to loop. It'll continue to execute as long as this condition is true. If the condition is false, the loop ends. Okay, so back in our code, let's just create a basic for loop. So we'll say for, and we'll say int row. And you could name this anything. It doesn't have to be row, it could be blah. But we're gonna call this row and we will talk about why later. So we'll say int row and we'll set it to zero. And then we'll say if row is less than three and then row plus plus, oops. And then we're going to say print f and we'll just say, let's print an x for now. So that's all we're gonna do. We're just gonna print out an x. Okay, so what are we doing here? So this is the loop counter and we are starting it at zero. And this is the condition. As long as row is less than three, the loop will go again and again. And then we have row plus plus, this is our increment. So after this code executes, then this will increase. So row will increase by one. Row plus plus is just saying add one to row. Now, why are we calling this row? So a row is just a number of items that are usually in a straight line. Okay, so let's run this code. Okay, we can enter in whatever height we want. Height is not really connected to our little pyramid yet. And let's just see what happens. Okay, so we've printed out three X's. You might be wondering what just happened. So we have this for loop here, um, row is zero. Okay, so row is less than three. So we jump in here and we print out one X. So we have one X printed. Okay, and now there's no code left within the loop. So row increments by one and row is now one. All right, then the loop runs for the second time. Row is now one, one is still less than three. So we print another X and then row gets incremented, so row is now two. Okay, so then again, we hop to the start of the loop and row is now two, two is still less than three, so we print another X and then all the code inside of the loop is done, so we increment row and row is now three. Okay, so we jump to the start of the loop for the final time, row is now three. Is three less than three? No, it's not. Okay, so the loop gets stopped, it's canceled, it's game over. We do not print another X and then we just come out of this loop, it stops running and it prints. So this is how we can use a loop to print a bunch of the same thing a certain amount of times. Okay, so now let's change our loop and let's actually use our height variable. So instead of saying row is less than three, which is kind of just a random number, let's say row is less than height. Okay, now what's going to happen, let's say make Mario, 
and then let's enter in a five. Okay, here we can see we printed out five X's. One, two, three, four, five. And if we do this again and we say 10, we can see that we printed out 10 X's. So now we are actually doing what we want. We are using this height variable. Let's talk about rows and columns. If we look at our problem again, we have eight rows and eight columns. Okay, so now we have um, a bunch of X's here, but we also need to write out our columns. So we are going to go inside of this outer loop and create an inner loop inside of it. So we'll say four, we'll say int column, and we'll set this to zero. We'll say is column less than height as well. And then we'll say column plus plus, and then we'll get our curly brackets. Now let's say print F, and we'll have a format specifier. So this isn't too important, but this is just saying we're going to be printing out a decimal and we'll say column. And then here, instead of X, let's also print out the value of row. And we'll add a space right here and we'll find out why in a second. And then we'll say row. Now let's do one more thing. We're going to print a new line. So we'll say print F and we'll say slash N. Okay, so we need to compile our code again. Okay, now let's enter a height of four. Okay, let's pause for a second. You might be thinking like, what on earth is going on right now? Here we are essentially creating our rows and our columns. So let's run through just the first iteration of what is happening here. So we'll say first iteration, we come in here and height is going to be four. So we'll say H is four. Now what's the next thing we do? We've already passed by all this code and now we have a height of four. Then we come to the first outer loop. Okay, in this outer loop, row is set to zero. So let's just write row is zero. And then we say, is row less than height? Like, can we even execute anything that's within this outer for loop? So row is less than height. And the next thing we're going to do is simply print the value of row. So if we imagine this is what we're printing, we have a zero that we're printing out like so. And we can see this here. So this zero is the same zero getting printed out right here. And now we move on to the next inner loop. So this inner loop is going to run a bunch of times and continue looping over and over again while still inside of the outer loop. So we'll jump into this inner loop. Column is zero. Is column less than height? Zero is definitely less than four. So we jump into this block of code and we are printing column. Column is zero. We printed a space right here after we printed row. So we'd actually go like this. That's what our computer does. And then we print the value of column, which is just zero. This code has run. So the inner for loop is basically like, okay, all the code inside of my loop has run. So it finishes up and increments column to one. Now what happens at the end of this? We jump back to the start of the loop. Column is now one. We say, okay, we'll only continue looping if column is less than height. One is definitely less than four. So we print again. And now we print the value of column, which is one. So we'll say one. Now we increment column. So column is now two. We jump back to the start of this loop and we say column is two. Two is less than four, so we print column. We have zero, one, and two. Okay, now we increment column. Column is three. We jump back to the start. Column is three. Column is less than height, so we can print column again and we print a three here. Okay, and then we increment column to, what is it now? Column is now four. Okay, we jump back up to the start of this inner loop. Column is four. Is four less than four? No, it's not. So this loop is canceled, we're all done. We do not print this, we do not increment, we basically just jump out of here, we're all done. We move on to the next line. The next line is print slash n. This is just printing a new line. So here, this is what we have printed so far, which corresponds perfectly with what we see. And we just go to a new line like so. And of course, these are just comments. These wouldn't actually be here in the terminal. Okay, now we've done this line and everything has executed that's within our outer for loop. So what do we do at the end of a loop? We increment. So we increment row to one. So we jump to the top of this for loop because remember, this is only run once. The outer for loop was on its first iteration, but in its first iteration, it executed the inner for loop as many times as it needed. And this is really key. So for each time the outer loop executes, so here it executes for the first time, everything inside of the inner loop just continues to loop. And here we have our second iteration of the outer loop and we can see that the inner loop ran a bunch again here as well. And this is how we'll create our rows and our columns. And you might start to see this a little more clearly if we change this to just a hash like so. Now let's compile our code again. 
Let's enter a height of four and see, we can begin to see what we want is emerging. So we want these rows and columns and we want them to have hashes. So we've got our rows and we've got our columns. They don't look exactly like the pyramid yet, but we are much closer. So that's really exciting. So let's just do one more thing. Let's take away this print of the row. We don't really need this. So if we just remove this, we are going to get the same thing, but we're not going to be printing out the values of row. So let's recompile and enter a height of four. And here we can still see these getting printed exactly what we want. Well, not exactly, but we're getting there. So if we printed the value of eight, we can see that we are getting a kind of looking pyramid, close to it at least, uh, rows and columns of eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we also have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have eight rows, eight columns, exactly what we want. Now we need to actually create the pyramid. We really just have a bunch of hashes, uh, which is good because it's getting closer to what we want, right? Like you have to make some sort of progress, but what we really want is this pyramid where the hashes are only right leaning. Let's remove this code here. So we want to print these hashes and we want them to be right aligned. How on earth are we gonna do that? That's the question. Let's look at the bottom of the pyramid. So the key insight here is that the bottom of the pyramid, like this length, is actually the same length as the top of the pyramid. But the bottom has a bunch of hashes and the top of the pyramid has a bunch of spaces and one hash at the end. And with each new column that is created, and with each new line that is created here, there are less spaces and more hashes. So the bottom of the pyramid has a length of eight. There are eight hashes and this makes sense. This is what we want because we input a height of eight. So my question for you is how many spaces does the top row need to be the same length as the bottom row? So the bottom row has eight spaces and the top row has one hash. So that means there are seven spaces here to make this row the same length as the bottom because there are eight places here. There are eight hashes. And if there's only one hash here, that means the rest of this space is seven spaces. Just repeat it out like space, 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 seven times. Like that's it. So at the top, we need seven spaces. But on the next line, we only need six spaces. And then we can continue down the line five spaces for three, two, one, and then eventually zero. So the next thing we're gonna do is let's change this hash to an X. And really we wanna change this to a space, but spaces are gonna be kind of confusing in the terminal cause we can't really see them. So we're going to change this to an X and then we'll change it back to a space later. So we can recompile, uh, we can enter in, let's say four again. Okay, so we can see this is very similar to what we had before. So here on each different row, we are really printing the same amount of X's, but we actually want our X's or our spaces to be decreasing, right? So we start off over here with seven spaces and one hash. Then we have six spaces and two hashes. Then we have three spaces and three hashes and so on. So we want the spaces to be decreasing each time. How would we do this? We can do this by saying column should be less than height minus row. Now let's just pause and see what happens. So we'll recompile and let's enter in a height and here is four. Okay, so what is happening here? Let's just walk through this real quick. So we jump into this code and row is zero. Then we jump into our inner loop. Column is zero. Uh, is column less than height? We'll say height is four. So we'll say first iteration. I cannot spell this. <laughs> First iteration, if height is four and row is zero, then height minus row is still going to be four. So this condition is true and we will print. So we'll print out an X and then we increment column by one. Now, just as we did before, this will increase until we get four X's down here, XXX. But because we are subtracting one from height each time, this will subtract one X on each iteration. So we had seven spaces here. Imagine these are X's and then we want six and five. And we can do this by saying height minus row. But there is one problem here. So here we are printing four X's and then three and then two and then one. 
The problem is, if this is an X or a space rather, by the very end down here, we don't actually want to be printing any X or space anymore. If we look over here, we have just printed a bunch of hashes. Now we'll add our hashes next. If you can think of these different lines here, we're gonna be adding a bunch of spaces and then we'll add a hash and then spaces and another hash. And we'll keep building this. But the key insight here is that we don't want any spaces or X's at the bottom row. We just want hashes. And so this is incorrect. We really want to be printing a row with no X or no space at all. And this issue stems from height minus row right here. Because when we start off, say height is four, and we say, okay, height minus row, and row is zero. So we're saying four minus zero, which is just four here. And we don't actually want to do this. We want to start off with only three hashes and end up with zero. So instead, let's say height minus row minus one. And let's add a little space here. Okay, now let's just pause for a second and run this. Okay, now we've ran this code and here we can see we're getting exactly what we want. So we have three X's and then imagine that we have one hash here on the right. We'll add that soon, just imagine that. And then next we have two X's or spaces and then we'll have two hashes here. And then finally, we're going to have one X or space and then three hashes here. We haven't added the hashes yet, so it might look a little confusing, but basically we are creating these decreasing X's or decreasing spaces. And this is exactly what we want. And then lastly, we have a line that you can't see, but this would be where there is a new line, but there is no X or space left. And on this line, we'll have a bunch of hashes. So if you look over here, there are no X's. In other words, there's no space, there's just a bunch of hashes. Now let's actually add these famous hashes that we've been talking about. Let's remove this. Okay, so inside of this for loop, so we have the outer for loop here. Now we're going to go next to the inner for loop. We're going to create another inner for loop. So they're going to be side by side. They're going to be in the same row. So with our X's or our spaces, in other words, we wanted to print a ton of X's right away, right? So if we have a pyramid that has a height of eight, then we want to print seven spaces or seven X's. But for the hashes, we don't want to print that many. We start off over here. We start off with just one hash. Then we have two, then three, and then we increment our hashes until we have eight hashes or until we have whatever the height is. So if this is the height of three, then we end up with three hashes. So knowing this, we can build our algorithm off of this knowledge. So we can say for int, and then we'll just call it hash. And then we'll say zero. We'll say if hash is less than or equal to row, and we'll explain this in a second, hash plus plus, this is our counter. Okay, then we're going to write the code. So if this loop condition is true, what are we going to do? We're going to print our hashes. So we'll just have one hash for each time. Okay, now let's go over what we're doing here. So we start with hashes at zero, and then we say print hashes until hashes are less than or equal to row. So let's run this and just see how this turned out. So we'll say make Mario and Mario. Let's enter in a height, let's say four. Okay, so this might be looking a little crazy with these X's, but imagine these X's are just spaces. So imagine if they were not here and then look at our pyramid. Woo! This is looking very, very close. Actually, this is looking exactly to what we want besides the X's, which we'll take out in a second. Okay, now let's just run through what is going on here. So we'll try to run through it a little bit so we have a better understanding. Walking through the code can be really helpful. So let's just say first iteration of the loop, row is zero, and then let's hop in. So height is four and row is zero. So we start here at the outer for loop. We say, all right, row is zero. Is row less than height? Row is definitely less than four, right? Zero is less than four. So we're going to jump into all of the code that's inside of the outer loop. And the first bit of code that's in here is the first for loop. Okay, so we'll come into here and we'll say column is zero right now and we wanna check if it's less than this. So height is four minus row, which is zero. So height is still four minus one. Okay, so this becomes three. So we're just asking is column less than three? That's all we're saying here. That's what this would evaluate to. Okay, let's add that back. Column is zero right now. Is that less than three? Absolutely. So we're going to print an X. So we'll print an X here. 
This pattern will continue. We will print this X and then column is incremented. Column now becomes one. And then we'll jump to the start of this loop again. And just like how we saw earlier, we will continue this loop until it's done. So in this case, we'll print three X's like so. Okay, now at the end of this, when this is completely done, we'll jump to the next line of code. And the next line is now this inner loop. Okay, so for this loop, we'll say hash is zero. Is hash less than or equal to row? So right now, row is still at zero, right? We are still on the first iteration of this outer loop. So hash is absolutely less than or equal to row. In this case, row is zero and hash is zero. So we can print one hash like so. Then after we've printed this, there is no more code in this loop to execute. So we will increment hash and hash is now going to be one. So we will jump back to the start of this inner loop because we are still inside of this loop. It's still gonna keep executing for as long as it can. So hash is now one. Is hash less than or equal to row? So hash is now one, but row is still zero. So one is not less than zero and one is definitely not equal to zero. So this loop stops, it's canceled, we leave it behind. Now let's switch these back. Okay, so now this loop is done. We move on to here. Okay, so we're simply going to print a new line. So down here, our code would jump over here and we would start on a fresh line. And then we would jump back again to here. Row would now become one. One is still less than four. And then we would jump all back again to our loops and then we would keep going. So this would be XX hash hash. And if you continue stepping through this code, this is what you will get and we'll see the logic here. So final thing that we need to do, we need to take away this X and actually just add a space. Okay, now let's go. Okay, let's enter in a height. We'll say four. Woo! Okay, this is exactly what we want. Look at that. Our rows and columns of four, this has a length of four here and you can't really see them, but there are three spaces right here and one hash. Perfect. Okay, let's try something else. Oh, we don't need to run make again because we made no changes. So let's just execute our executable. Let's say a height of eight. Woo, okay, we did it. This is exactly what we wanted. This is a right aligned pyramid. Okay, so let's run our check again and see if all of our tests are passing now and if we have successfully solved this problem. What if this is all wrong? <laughs> Just kidding, okay, this is gonna be great. Whoa, we did it! Okay, all of our tests are passing. We have successfully solved this problem. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. Uh, please subscribe if you like this video and I'll keep making more.